In the name of Jesus Christ, I would like to greet you, Shalom. I'm greeting you uh, because I believe you are my brother and sister. And right now I believe you are watching this preaching because I believe Jesus has something to teach you through this preaching. By the way, does heaven exist? What is your perception about this issue? What does the Bible teach us about it? Well, before we get in to the Bible and its verses, I would like to invite you as we're going to offer a word of prayer. Father in heaven, once more we are inviting you to be with us as we're going to open your word. Please, may the Holy Spirit help us to understand. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. I'll be starting sharing with you an experience, an experience of a young lady who had never had an experience of living in a village. There was a day her mother invited her to go and visit her grandmother. And when she was there, one of these nights, she was surprised. You know why? She looked at the sky, and the sky at that night was beautiful. The sky was filled with stars, something that she never saw in the city. And when she saw that picture, she called her mother, Mommy, come, look to this. The sky is so beautiful, so nice. I can't see that in the city. But mom, think with me. If the sky is so beautiful out of it, how much more does it look inside of it? Well, of course, we all believe that sky is a very real person, place where Jesus, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the angels are dwelling right now there. But the good news that I'm bringing to you is that you and I have an opportunity to dream in this home because Jesus promised us to live with him on this eternal home. Jesus Christ, before his crucifixion, he shared with his disciples a very beautiful promise that I call the nicest promise in the Bible. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, Jesus said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, notice, that where I am, there you may be also. But now the question is, what does the Bible teach about heaven? Is it a real place? Can we still dream with this promise? Well, according to what the Bible says to us, yes, heaven is a real place. And we can still dream with this home. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, Paul wrote to us a very important statement that we have to understand. Some of us like to say that, well, we don't have too much information about the heaven to come, about the home to come. Yet, through the scriptures, we can understand that we have things well revealed that can help us to live with this hope. And Paul said, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, e the deep things of God. Brothers and sisters, God revealed to us the truth about heaven because he wants us to understand and he wants us to dream because he wants to live with us in this eternal home. And I hope you can live with this hope because John, in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 2 to 3, he saw this city, he saw this home. 
let, let us read what he saw. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Brothers and sisters, what a wonderful promise. What a wonderful vision God gave to John. And you know what? All those who lived in the Old Testament, they dreamed with this home. Moses, Abraham, Enoch, Elijah, Elisha, all of them dreamed with this hope and i believe jesus also wants you to dream with this home because he's going to realize it in your life yes you might you might be suffering right now but jesus is giving to you the assurance of this home a home where you shall never suffer more let us read what is written in hebrews 11 verse 13 this all died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. My brother, you are just a stranger on this earth, because the truly home God is going to give us when he will come again. Let us read what Paul wrote in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. What a beautiful promise. Well, perhaps you, may, you might be asking to yourself, well, Jesus is going to come, and we are going to live in heaven, but what are we going to do on this heaven? So let us start to analyze closely this promise and this vision that God gave to John. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 2 to 3, we read, And John, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with men, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Well, we have to, uh, to question, how does the holy city, the city of God, this eternal home, the dwelling place of God looks like? Well, we have all the informations, because the angel was giving the the, this vision to uh, John uh, revealed clearly how does it look. Let us read what John saw. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven of God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal and had a wall great and high and had twelve gates and at the gates twelve angels and names written thereon which are the names of the twelve tribes of Israel and the city light four square and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with the reed twelve thousand furlongs the length and the Bread and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, and hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is of the angel. Well, those who are Bible, the, those who are students of the Bible, they have been calculating what the angel told to John. And according to what we have today, a furlong is about 606 feet, 6 in all, 18, eight, uh, 185 meter. Thus, 12,000 furlongs would be about 
2,778.4 miles, which corresponds to 2,218 kilometers. Well, what the Bible simply is teaching us is that the holy city has place for all those who want to go to live with God. All those who want to live with God have a place promised for Jesus on this very place, on this heavenly city. And Jesus is going to give us and fulfill this promise. Let's look closer, closer and really closer to this city. Revelation 21 verse 10 and 23 says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it, and the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the lamp is the light thereof. And the Bible continues saying, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Friend, brother and sister, I want to tell you something. After Jesus coming, he will come. Notice and remember, Jesus won't come, won't come in a hidden way. He will be revealed. He will be seen to all those who will be living on those last days, on the day that Jesus will come. And right after his coming, we'll be traveling to heaven during seven days. And as we'll be entering to this city, God shall wipe away all tears from day from our, our eyes and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain well there is a very beautiful scene that jesus is going to give to us this privilege to experience i don't know if you are getting ready for this but jesus wants you to get ready let us see what john uh, what the prophet Isaiah wrote about the new heaven. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall be lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. Isaiah 35, verse 5 to 6. But you might be asking to yourself, well, Heaven is a real place, okay? And the Bible teaches us. So, shall, be, shall we be doing nothing in heaven all through eternity? Will we just be playing an harp or just praising God? So, let us see what the Bible says about it. Let us read. And they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them they shall not build and another inhabit they shall not plant and another eat for as the days of a tree are the days of my people and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hand Isaiah 65 verse 21 to 22 my friend this promise is real this place is real and jesus is going to become it real as well you have to get to get ready for this promise let us see others promises and the cow and the bear shall feel shall feed the young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox my friend lion shall eat straw like the ox did you imagine let us think a little while when you are thinking about lion what image does come from your mind of course you can't approach it and you can't even touch it but the bible is teaching us that we are going to dwell with it we are going to live with it we are going to enjoy his company in heaven because the lion shall eat straw like the ox hmm? they shall be eating the same food M when we are thinking about lion we just think they taking away our lives but in heaven we are going to have this privilege 
to live with them, we, to enjoy their company. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah 11 verse 6 to 9. My friend, you have to get ready for this promise but something that amazes me when i'm studying about this issue is about the day of worship you know when you are walking by you have heard a lot of ideas about the day of worship several of us teach that sabbath is the day of worship or many of us say also that we can worship god on sunday or even on friday all others have been saying that we can worship god on every day whatever the day you chose you can worship god and truly that isn't wrong you can worship god on monday on friday on saturday on sunday every day you can worship god you remember jesus teaches us to seek first the kingdom of god in other way we have to seek first god every day our lives must be submitted to him in a spirit of worshiping but when you are studying this issue you can also understand something that you need to start to practice here on earth because when you'll be there you are going to practice and to live it in your life you know what the bible says also that for us the new heavens and the new earth which i will make shall remain before me says the lord so shall your seed and your name remain now notice what Isaiah says, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, says the Lord. Isaiah 66 verse 22 to 23. Maybe you are surprised right now and thinking, how come? I never knew about it. Yes, my friend. Yes, my brother. We are going to worship God on Sabbath. That is the day. That is the fourth commandment. And the law of God is eternal as God is eternal. And we have to start to worship God on this day as we are waiting for the coming of our dear Lord, Sabbath. So my friend, on the next time I'm inviting you, on the next week, you may find a church that worships God on Sabbath and you will get surprised. Well, the another issue that we can talk about when we are talking about heaven is about how are we going to live? Are we going to be spirit? Shall those who will be taken to heaven be like this embodied spirit? Well, we are going, we have to discover it. We have to know what the Bible teaches us. Because many of us like to think that we are going to be spirit. We are going to fly like what the movies have been showing to us. But does it, f can it be found in the Bible? Well, according to what is written in Luke chapter 24, verse 20, 37 to 38, there the doctor Luke shares with us the experience of Jesus Christ right after his resurrection. You remember that Jesus resurrected with a heavenly body. Hmm? Let us see what the Bible says. But they were terrified, who? The disciples, and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why? Are we troubled? Jesus was asking to them. Remember, this verse or the context of this verse was when Jesus, when the disciple, the disciples, were close to a room. They were talking about Jesus Christ, thinking if Jesus was a liar or not, if he was going to fulfill his promise or not, because Jesus was dead at that time. But remember, when he was alive, he promised them that uh, at the third day he would resurrect and they were waiting for that event so as they were close to that room jesus appeared to them and he said why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your heart behold my hand and my feet that it is i myself handle me and see for a spirit had not flesh and bones as he see me have and when he heard us spoken he showed them his hands and his feet verse 39 to 
40. Now, we have to understand some important events that took place as Jesus was revealing himself to the disciple. Remember, Jesus, he showed them his feet as well as his hands, which were pierced with nails. Sight, hearing, and the sense of touch were combined to provide assurance that he was a real being and not an apparition or a figment of an overwrought imagination. Hmm? Jesus offered sensory evidence of three kinds in order to convince the disciples that he was a real material being even after his resurrection. So, my friend, the good news is that even right after Jesus coming, we are not going to lose our identity. We are going to be the same. You are going to recognize your grandfather, your grandmother, your mother, your son, your beloved husband, your beloved wife. You are going to recognize each other and you have to be ready because Jesus is going to prepare is preparing for us surprise but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and her mongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is the second death says revelation 21 verse 8 so my friend aside of good news of all those who are preparing themselves to receive jesus christ in the cloud aside of it there is also another new and that isn't good because if you do not get ready you shall be found among those who are going to live not in heaven the bible clearly teaches us that aside of those who are going to heaven there are also those who are right now choosing to go not in heaven and the bible clearly says that the murderers the abominable they are going not to heaven the sorcerers the idolaters the liars my friends there is serious issues because god is a holy one and we have also to be holy as God is. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defiles, neither whatsoever works abomination or makes a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation 21 verse 27. So my friend, why you do not get ready for this beautiful trip we are waiting for? Why? What are you waiting for to be ready? Jesus is preparing a place for you and me. And this place is real because the Bible says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcomes will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So, my friend, how what's that mm -mm. so the bible teaches us that we today is the day to listen to the voice of the holy spirit my friend do not hard your heart the holy spirit is speaking to your heart right now i believe and he is molding you so that you can be able to understand perceive and receive this promise in your life the teaching of heaven is very clear in the bible heaven is a very real place is the heavenly home in which we are going to live in with Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, this teaching is not out of the Bible. We can find it throughout the Bible. From the very first book up to the last book, the Bible teaches us about this reality. And you have to get ready. I know, sometimes because of 
the, our lifestyle. We have been losing our focus to what Jesus is teaching us. And right now, you might be thinking, well, I'm so busy. And the world today teaches that everything is relative. So if everything is relative, it doesn't matter to believe or not in heaven, in our eternal life. But my friend, yes, you might be thinking so. It is true. Everything might be relative, out of the Bible. But the Bible is giving to us the assurance, the certainty of this teaching. Heaven is real. And we have to be prepared. We have to get ready for this coming. And of course, right now you might be thinking of how will it be to see again your beloved one, maybe your wife, your husband, your children, your grandmother, your cousin. I don't know who are you waiting for. But the promise of Jesus Christ is certain. And before I end with this, I would like to read some verses from the Bible just to help you to understand important things. In the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 1, the Bible says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned from her husband. Brothers and sisters, this new Jerusalem, this new heaven is coming out from God. Jesus is giving to us this assurance, he himself. In other words, if he isn't there, this city does not exist. Let us read what he says in verse 4. And God will wipe away every tear. Every tear will be weeping away just because Jesus is there. Verse 5. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new brothers everything will be made new not because of you not because of me but jesus himself is going to make everything new in verse 22 but i saw no temple in it for the lord god almighty and the lamb are its temple the city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it for the glory of God illuminated it. The lamp is its light. Brothers, the lamp is the light of this city. And the certainty of this teaching is assured because Jesus himself is faithful. And if he is faithful, of course, he shall be faithful also to fulfill this promise. Reason your will to renew your covenant your compromise with God, and to say, Jesus, today I want to prepare myself for your second coming and to dream with this home. It is not your will to start to think about this heaven, about this heavenly place where we are going to embrace our beloved one, those who death is taking us right now. It's not your will to embrace this promise to live eternally with our Father, to live eternally with the heavenly angels, to see our beloved one. I believe it is your will. So if it is your will, despising of what is happening to your life right now, I'm inviting you to close your eyes as we are praying. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this beautiful promise. Today we learn heaven is a very real place, Father. And your will is that we may be there. Thank you so much, Jesus, because with your death, you are giving to us another privilege to live with you. So, Father, 
as we learned about this truth. You may renew it and you may receive us so that we can be able by the blood of Jesus Christ to live with you on that eternal home. Thank you, Father, for this promise. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.